Hi right there. This is a piece of, for lack of a better term, wall art that I turned. When I first finished it, to be honest, I didn't like it very much, but the more I look at it, the more I'm coming to like it. It's oak, not one of my favorite woods to turn, but it turned out all right. And I've used ink in these rings, India ink. So I think that did a nice job. When I finished it, because I didn't like it very much, I decided I might as well turn the backside as well, instead of just finishing it off. And I did that, but I'm gonna keep that a little secret for now. Take a look at how I did this one, and then we'll get to the second side. I have a blank of oak here, 7 eighths of an inch thick and 14 inches in diameter. It's not cut to a perfect circle, but it's very close. Now to find the center, there are a number of ways, but I've got a new tool. I got it like that. From Lee Valley, it's called a center finder. And you just find the number on the outside of the ring here, for which whatever you want. This one is 14 inch. So I put the 14 inch around the outside until it lines up as close as I can. Take my scratch all, make a mark, and I've got the center. I have a second piece smaller here I want to cut a six inch circle out of. And I have a smaller center finder for it. So again, I just put it on here, line up the six inch circle until it's all within the wood. Take the scratch all, make a mark, and I have the center. Now I can take my pencil on that six inch mark. There are some holes in this binder. Go around with it until I've marked it. Now I can take it on the band saw, jig saw, whatever I want and cut that out. I also want some smaller circles in here. So here's one at one inch diameter. I'm not sure how many I'm going to use, so I'm going to put a few in here. This is an inch and a half. There's two inch. Of course, the two inch puts me one inch off of center, because that's the diameter. I don't think I'll go any further than that. I will put one at one half inch. Actually, that'll be too small. So anyway, I've got that marked. I'll cut that out now, and then I'll be back. I like these. I have the six inch disc cut out now, and I used the circle sanding jig on my disc sander to make it nice and smooth and round. I've drilled a 1 16th inch hole in the center so I can put a small finishing nail through, which is into the divot in the center of the large blank. Now I can draw a circle around it, and to make sure that I get it back in exactly the same spot, I'll put a mark on the small disc lining up with that mark. My intention is to glue this on there and use it to mount it to the lathe. Let's see. I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch hole in a number of places. I haven't decided how far off center I want to mount this. I'm going to use the holes to mount the disc on the lathe with the woodworm screw. second that I'm going to use all of these holes. But as a wise man once said, better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So it does give me options and I can decide what to use when I have it on the lathe. I'm going to glue this disc down now onto the blank. I'm using tight bond. Always had good luck with tight bond. Although to be honest, I've never really had any Woodworking glue failed me yet.
Now I will let the glue set overnight, give it lots of time to cure, and get back to it tomorrow. I have it mounted now on the woodworm screw. My first step is going to be just to true up the edge and round it over a little bit. And I'm going to use my 3 8 inch bowl gouge for that. I'm just going to draw some test lines on here. I may very well erase them and try something else, but I just want to get a feel for what I might try to do here. Now I'm going to move this over one hole and see what kind of job I can do between these lines offset. I think I will try going with those lines see what I end up with. I've returned it to the center hole on the woodworm screw and I'm going to use my skew chisel to define some of these lines. I'm going to make this section a bead and there's very little space I've got between my line for the offset and this so I'm going to start out here a little bit. I'm going to use my spindle gouge. I think it might do a little better job getting in there. It's a little slimmer.
I will be back after the sanding is completed on these areas and then I will begin working on the ones that are offset. I've now sanded all the parts that are already turned and I'm going to move it over to the offset and get ready to work on these parts. To make narrow V-shaped grooves I use the toe of the skew chisel swinging the handle a little to the left and then plunging the toe into the wood, swinging the hand over to the right, moving the tip slightly to the right and then plunging it in at an angle again until I create a groove. I had started to make two rings with three V grooves in each, but at this point I decided those would be too small and changed it up to make two V grooves in each ring. first off-center turning and of course when you do something the first time you're bound to learn things. One thing I'll point out here in case you want to do one and haven't tried one before. When I sanded these parts here after my first turning I should have sanded everything. All I sanded was inside here and this and the outside but these parts that I did not sand now when I'm doing the offset turning I can't sand them with it spinning. So I have to sand by hand, like this, going with the grain of course, and it's taking a lot more time than if I had simply sanded the entire board in the beginning. Just a little tip in case you decide to try this, it will save you some time and energy. I'm going to seal this with a mixture of Zinser Seal Coat mixed 50-50 with methyl hydrate. Its purpose, as the name would suggest, is to seal the wood. If I was smart, I would probably just coat this with Minwax Wipe-On Poly after this soaks in. It doesn't look too bad. I kind of like it the way it is. But apparently I'm not that smart because I'm going to try doing some coloring on it as well. Side here like this then I'm going to take this off the lathe 
set it down so it's horizontal instead of vertical, and I might be able to do a better job of sealing it. Seal coat is nice and dry now. I'm going to cut it back on the large areas with 4 aught steel wool. In the small grooves, I don't want to just end up with this caught in there, I'm going to use 400 grit sandpaper. I'll clean the grooves that I made with the offset, then I will put it back on the center on the woodworm screw to clean up the rest of it. I'm quite happy with the way this has turned out, pun intended, and maybe I should just coat the whole thing with Minwax wipe on poly and leave it, but I want to give it a little punch. So I think I'm going to coat everything with the wipe on poly that I don't want color in, and then I'm going to put color in these four grooves, just to see if that'll make it pop. It's just an experiment. I don't want to ruin it, but at the same time, if I don't try it, I'll never know. So I'm going to coat everything except those four grooves wipe on poly carefully trying not to get it into the grooves and then I'm hoping if I slop any dye outside of the grooves it won't penetrate the wipe on poly and I'll be able to remove it. We'll see. Well, this is what I've come up with so far. Now, I like the black, it really does pop. I like the way it's vibrant, but I don't like the design. Design experts say that things should be done in odd numbers, three, five, seven, whatever. So I'm going to try sanding the poly out of this ring, dyeing that with the black India ink, and see what it looks like after that. On with the experiment. I put this back on the lathe, used sandpaper to sand out the poly that was in this groove. I also used a pencil to put marks around here so I've got perfectly designated areas within which to put the India ink. Now the sandpaper hit a little bit on some of the black here, but I'll just replace that, not a big deal. Now it's going to be a matter of trying to stay within those lines, and I'm not the steadiest person on earth, so this could be a challenge. Anyway, let's see what I can do here. No, I did not apply the ink nearly this quickly. This is just a real fast look at a little bit of it.
Well, I think it looks better with the three rings. Not sure this is exactly an art piece, but hey, it's my first attempt and I'm happy with it so far. I want to put poly over the entire thing now. Once that's all dry, I'm going to reverse chuck it and clean up the back side of it. Well, so far I like it. It's not wonderful. I'm not sure if it's art. I'm still kind of trying to decide about that, but I do like it. Now I have to work on the back. When I reverse it, put it in the coal jaws, I can't get right to the very edge on the back side. So I'm going to do a little turning on the back first, do some poly on there, and then when I put it in the coal jaws, I won't have to work right from the edge. So I guess that's my next step. I don't have any specific plans for what I want to do on the back side. I do know that if I put this in the coal jaws or the extensions for the coal jaws, I will not be able to turn right at the edge. So that's why I've turned this part. I will sand it now. I'll put the poly on too so I don't have to get too close to the edge when I have it in the extension jaws. And then I will turn. All I have to do is turn from here in. So after I get this sanded, and the poly put on, I'll be back. I'll be using extensions on my coal jaws to reverse this. To protect the outside edge, I'm applying two layers of masking tape. To protect the finished face from being scratched, I'm using a sheet of blue shop towel. To further protect the outside edge, I've wrapped a layer of bicycle tire tube. First thing I'm going to do is remove this glue block that I used to apply the woodworm screw to. Then I'm going to take this back out so I can measure the thickness at the various places where I had turned. I want to make sure that I'm not going to go right through this. And that might just ruin my day. In case you're interested and haven't already seen it, I have a video posted on how to make the extensions for the coal jaws. I will put a link down below the video in the description box in case you want to check that out. I want to measure the thickness of the wood in the areas that I have turned. I want to make sure I don't turn through from the other side, so I need some idea of just how thick this is. I won't be able to check as I'm turning. To do that, I'm going to measure from the outside to the area I'm interested in. In this case, five and a half inches to the center of that hollow. I'll mark that down so I don't forget it. Then I'll use these calipers to check the thickness in that area. Now it's above the wood, so as I lower this, just until it touches, that's where the thickness is. Now measuring between those two arms, 
one half inch, just a hair over one half inch, I can mark that down. I'll do the same in each of the other areas that I have turned. That'll give me a guide when I'm turning the other side. And I'll be back when I have finished that. There are really only two rings that I have to worry about the thickness on. And I've marked them with these pencil lines. They're a half inch thick at those spots, so if I don't go any deeper than about a quarter of an inch, I'll be fine, and that's really all I'm going to want to do anywhere anyway. Now I'm just going to try to make a few rings, try to do something with. In order to check the depth of anything that I turn, I can simply put a straight edge across like this and then measure with another. This spot, for instance, is about an eighth of an inch deep. So I've got lots of room to play with. I started to use the skew chisel to create some V grooves in this area, but after a few seconds of looking at them, I decided I didn't really like them very much. So I went back to the spindle gouge and the bowl gouge, cleaned them up and made another cove. I'm just going to sand all this up, see what it looks like after that, and then I'll be back. I have it all sanded now. It's just a series of coves, these rings. I've sanded it to 400 grit, and now I'm going to apply Minwax Wipe On Poly, a few coats, and then I'll come back after it's finished and show you the finished product.
This is the Beal three wheel buffing system. I'm going to use just the wax pad with Carnauba wax to put a little bit of a luster on this piece. I'm not sure how well that'll show up in the camera, but it is much nicer. I quite like it. And with that, it's complete. Two-sided, and I'm going to refer to it as art, because I don't know what else to call it anyway. You can decide if you think it's art or not. Anyway, I enjoyed doing it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks for coming by. Have a great day in your shop, and remember, always be safe. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. Thanks again.